Hello everyone, my name is Rupert Goff and today we're talking about your mortgage number. But before we get into that, if you get any value out of this video at all, click the thumbs up button. And if you want to see future videos, hit the subscribe button. Both of these are free for you to do and tell our YouTube and Google overlords that this video is worth watching. Everybody has a mortgage number. That is, everyone has an amount of money that a lender is willing to lend them to purchase a house. It doesn't matter whether you're up to your eyeballs in debt, recently bankrupt, or just living paycheck to paycheck. You need to accept that, like a credit score, everybody over the age of 18, which is the minimum age you can purchase a home at, including you, has a mortgage number. In this video, we'll look at what your mortgage number might be and how you can confidently calculate it. So when you hear that a friend or a workmate or just a random person in the news was declined for a mortgage, what you're actually hearing is that the mortgage amount they applied for exceeded their personal mortgage number at one or more lenders. And here's the first thing you need to know about your personal mortgage number. It varies from lending institution to lending institution. And I know what you're thinking, it can't be that much. It must be a standardized way of calculating affordability. But because this is a leveraged transaction, in other words, you only need about $9,000 of income per $100,000 that you're borrowing, a small difference in the way the banks calculate income makes a big difference in the amount they will lend you. Just thinking about the four main banks alone, an average couple earning $80,000 each, in other words, a total household income of $160,000, has a mortgage number variability of just over $90,000. That's to say that the best bank for them will lend them $90,000 more than the strictest bank in the market. And that is just the four main banks. Generally, it's the individual bank policies that cause these differences. Banks all have different servicing rates, which is the interest rate which they stress test your affordability at. They also tend to treat credit card limits differently. They even allocate different costs for the number of children and motor vehicles that you have. All of these policies are what cause the difference between what bank A will lend you and what bank B will lend you, even under the exact same scenario. So your mortgage number isn't set in stone and very much relies on which lender you approach. It helps if you think about your mortgage number as the most lending you can get from the best bank for you. But here's where it gets a little more complicated. If you set your sights farther away from the banks, your mortgage number is likely to get higher. Second tier lenders tend to have more appetite for risk and charge a higher interest rate to factor in that risk. People who have a blemished credit record, whether it's a debt collection or a bankruptcy, will know this very well. A main bank may flat out refuse to deal with someone with a poor credit record. But again, this doesn't mean their mortgage number is zero, only zero at main banks and only for a limited time. Eventually, all bad credit scores are repaired and that mortgage number will grow at the main banks again. A bit of soul searching has to be done here. Are you willing to pay more in interest if it means getting the house you love or even just to get onto the property ladder? If a main bank will lend you $600,000 but a second tier lender would lend you $800,000 but charge you an additional 2% per annum, is that worthwhile to you? To be clear, the answer can absolutely be no. You're not willing to pay an interest rate premium, in which case your mortgage number is $600,000, assuming you've spoken to the bank that will lend you the most. Or you may think that the extra $200,000 and the increased quality of home that you buy with that money is worth paying an extra 2%, in which case your mortgage number is $800,000. So how do you calculate your mortgage number? There are various methods for calculating your mortgage number, ranging from mortgage affordability calculators online to actually getting a mortgage pre-approval. If we think about the answer on a confidence rating, then inputting your numbers into a mortgage affordability calculator should give you about a 25% confidence that that is your mortgage number. In other words, about one in four people who calculate their affordability from an online calculator actually get something close to an accurate number. 
These calculators are good, but they don't distinguish between the bank's individual affordability calculators or perform any kind of review of your bank statements or credit report. They are vague indications of everything being equal, what an average bank might lend to you. Having a brief chat with a mortgage advisor might increase your confidence rating to about 50%. Mortgage advisors can spot any red flags in your financial situation and know the lender's policies. A brief chat again doesn't look into your credit report or day-to-day -day spending, but running your situation past a human should get you closer to knowing your mortgage number. Finally, a mortgage pre-approval is about the best way to accurately know your mortgage number. A pre-approval says that given what you've submitted to the bank, a bank would be willing to lend you X amount of dollars. You should be about 95% confident that the number on the pre-approval is your mortgage number. Why 95% not 100%? A good question. There are a couple of scenarios that may change what a bank will lend you. Having a pre-approval tells you what a bank is willing to lend you based on your financial situation. However, it should be noted that this number could change if the type of property you are looking at changes. As an example, many banks are willing to lend up to 90% on a newly constructed standalone home, but only ever up to 80% on an apartment, regardless of whether the apartment is new or old. This falls into the category of property specific mortgage numbers. When you're first trying to establish what your number is, try ignoring the property specific mortgage number and just try to calculate what your maximum mortgage number is. In other words, what your maximum mortgage borrowing capability is. You can always make adjustments to the type of property you're searching for once you know your maximum number. Next week's video will be on how to increase your mortgage number when it's not enough to purchase a house. The problem that is plaguing most first home buyers and property investors at the moment. So hit subscribe to be notified when our next video comes out to find out how to get closer to purchasing your next property. I'm Rupert Goff, thank you for watching.